Jason Breen. Thanks for having us down here. It's good to have you. Oh, mate, I love your man dungeon. <laughs> it's very cool. Yeah. Why'd you call it the dungeon? Bars. Oh, the bars on the windows. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you need to tell me what intimidating. Okie dokie, so can I ask you, why ham radio? Why not, say, Facebook on the internet? Um, mostly because I'm not allowed to have Facebook right oh, now. Okay, <laughs> yeah. fair enough. Too young. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I mean, um, talking on the phone and, um, is just, you could, um, it's all done for you. I, um, I want something that you could, um, sort of do it yourself. You can, um, have all the gears so I can do something when I get a bit bored. Yep, um. So you like the challenge of, of, of surmounting the technology or, or getting over the technology or, or something along those lines. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So when did the interest first start in here? Uh, probably when my dad sort of gave me a simple CB radio. They, um, a two-way radio. Um, we were doing it when we were out in the country doing camping. Um, we had my sister had the other one and we were just talking across across the tents and that was all fun. So I suppose that was the, the, the start of it all for you in the sense of it, it, it revealed the world of, of radio technology to you. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Getting a hand license is not an easy thing. It requires a lot of study, <laughs> does it not? It does. Um, I was stuck in a room for about a, a couple of hours. Um, and this is doing your exam? Um, yes, in the course, yeah. What's involved in the course? Um, how, how, to call, um, how to call people on the radio, how to set up one, um, how to tune one, uh, set up an antenna, put it, um, putting it up and knowing what sort of connectors to use for what sort of radio. Um, so there's quite a bit of technical knowledge that you have to acquire before you can actually jump on the <laughs> hand mic and start calling people. Yeah, you um, you have to know all the all the codes and stuff. Yeah. Okay, uh, is it interesting? Yeah, definitely. Now why? <laughs> you said yes. Yeah. Um, I just find it really fun. I get to um, talk to people around the world. Uh, Talking to people right across um, across the country is fun enough, but around the world um, you get to know different people about um, and the sort of culture and stuff. Okay, do, do people have an idea about how young you are when you talk to them on the ham radio? No, um, in fact, last night I was talking to someone in Queensland get, um, in a sort of a competition. Uh, he, um, I said. Um, Hi, I'm Jason, and I'm 10 years old. And he was like, um, he sort of jumped up, and he talked to me a bit longer than everyone else, so <laughs> I knew. <laughs> Are there many other 10-year-olds on ham radio that you know of? Um, no, no. That surprised me somewhat. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, is this the elements of ham radio, I suppose the electronics, the technical aspect, is that as appealing to you as the actual physical talking in the hand mic? Probably, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> I guess so. Alright, now, this is all part of, of uh, I suppose, your dad and yourself have, have got an interest in, in, in space and in radio in yes. space. Now, can you explain to me your first experiment with your, your, your first weather balloon going in space? Uh, well, I didn't have my license then, but, um, my dad, he, um, and I had gone up to Rankin Springs and to West Wyong. Uh, we had set, launched a weather balloon that had, um, let's see, it was about half a kil kilogram. It had a couple, of, um, a camera in it and a tracker. I was sitting in the back when, when we launched it, we had, uh, put, uh, we packed up the gear and we had to rush out to, um, <laughs> we had a, sort of a race with a weather balloon going about two, um, 200k, right. <laughs> which was quite fun. It had um, basically crash landed in, um, in a field. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> about, I don't know how far away, but it was, um, we were 
out there for an hour and a bit, um, looking for it, um, until my dad's phone eventually died, so right. we could... Bad. <laughs> so, um, so we had to go back, which was hard, but we got back and uh, we ended up having to go through another gate into the field that it was in, and my, um, we had the GPS, so we put in the coordinates to navigate to. So um, my dad stopped about 50 meters in, uh, in front of it, and no, behind it, sorry, and because uh, um, if he did, he might have run might over have it. it. <laughs> yeah. So um, it was all really good fun. What was the purpose of the exercise? What were you trying to achieve? Uh, um, we're trying to promote. Um, uh, That's right. I can always ask Dad, so don't don't stress, or we can always stop. So. Do you want to think about that one? Yeah. Okay. Do you want a hint? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we were trying to do, first of all, test the radio systems oh, yeah. and make sure we could do them so that we could do bigger and better ones next time. Yeah. That's basically it. All right. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I'll ask you again? Yeah. Okay. So what was the reason for the experiment? What were you trying to achieve? Um, we were trying to test our radio equipment so we could do bigger and better things, like um, the new next project, which is a uh, return to feet and stabilizing the balloon so it faces one way, because the wind catches it and it starts to spin around. So um, we're, um, it's going to be self-correcting and stay focused on the one spot. And this is the next experiment, the next next yeah. base experiment. Yeah, we, um, and there's also going to be a return to feet. Um, it's going to we're going to have like certain waypoints around the map. And what's going to happen is it's a steerable parachute and it's going to steer itself to one of the closest waypoint. So it will um, go to that and it would um, we would know where it would land so we wouldn't have to go through the process of finding it again. Okay. Now, when you got... You, you, you had a camera. In fact, here's the device yeah. here. I'll do the... Uh, and, uh, so we made this one earlier, as they say in yeah. the cooking man. <laughs> In, in the cooking shows, they say we made this one earlier. So this is your experiment. So can you explain yeah. it for us, please, Jason? Um, so basically, this is actually the wrong way around. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, we have um, the camera, which is inside the box, and right. it just sticks in there. Mm -hmm. We have the parachute, which is um, doesn't have this. It normally doesn't have this shot cord on it, but it um, it normally hangs onto there, and right. the balloon hangs off. Uh, hangs off the parachute, so the balloon bursts and the parachute opens, so, yeah. Alright, so, and was this the original box or the original unit that held the camera that went up into space? Um, yeah, it was. Um, okay. It doesn't look too damaged, or it hasn't burnt up going through the atmosphere, or... <laughs> well, am, I, am I technically incorrect there, Jason? Sort of, we didn't go into space. Okay. Yeah, into we, space. <laughs> well, you went up certainly into, past the stratosphere? Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, so it was quite fun. We had um, we had the camera mount inside here. This was made um, made um, by a bunch of school kids in the university. Okay. Oop. Oh. Sorry, can I correct that? Oh, for high school. Important. Yeah, Blackwater Bay, Sydney. Yeah. Team, Sydney. Okay. You want to start there again? Yeah. All right. Can I change my angle, Mike? Yeah, surely, mate. Jason, so who made this? Um, Black Rottle Bay had made it. Um, Black Rottle Bay High School? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, they had cut it with a hot wire, just like we, um, and they had basically glued it all together. We had added tape for extra support and also put the strings on. Okay. So it was um, all quite fun doing the initial process. Um, when you got, when you found the unit, after it returned to Earth's surface, yeah, and you saw the, the when you, and you saw the shots, yeah. What was your first reaction when you saw the shots from your spacecraft? Um, yay! Um, we um, we'd actually done this. It was um quite uh, it was really fun. We'd celebrated with uh, but um ginger beer. 
Yep. A refreshing Bundaberg ginger beer? <laughs> yeah. Why wouldn't you? That's a tasty drop. Yeah, um, we had them in a boot to have a cool off. So, okay. yeah. did, you, did you think that you would be able to put a, a craft into space or near space? Um, no, not until um, we'd um, thought about it. Um, I was thinking it was a, a dream, basically. I'd never be able to do this, but um, here we are, I'm doing it, yeah. And the next one, as you mentioned, is mm. going to be the Mark II version, if you like. <laughs> it's going to be able to stay in the One Direction. Yes, yeah. It's, um, it's going to have little fins to correct itself. When does that launch take place? Uh, probably around uh, next year. Okay. You're still in the process of working on the uh, the framework of the machinery then? Yeah. Just getting the, the, the unit up and running? Um, I don't know. We could actually be doing it um, in three months or something. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, um, what do your friends think of this? Uh... They don't really care. No? No, they don't really care too much. Um, they, um, in fact, um, one of the people in my class said um, they put newspaper articles on the on their book, the homework book, and I saw myself on it. Yeah. Which is, um, Weird. Yeah. <laughs> Especially because it was a girl, but um, never mind. <laughs> but um, my friends, um, they really don't really care because um, they're not really interested in this sort of stuff. They're, um, they're more interested in games and all that sort of thing. Yeah. And, well, sorry, sorry, Mike. That's right. Just turn yourself a little bit. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.